Welcome to the introduction to Applied and Pre-Calculus Math 20S at Fort Richmond Collegiate. This is the first of two videos on mixed and entire radicals. You can refer to your textbook pages 213 through 217 and this is the Manitoba curriculum outcome of A2 Part B. Okay, we're going to get started here with uh, this example here of simplifying the radical of square root 50. Now, to simplify a radical, we have to break down the radical into two parts here. So let me get my pen out. There we go. I'm going to look for two different factors here. Uh, and one of the factors is going to be a perfect square. Now, what are the perfect squares? Okay. A perfect square is any number such as the number 4. 4 is a perfect square because it is 2 times 2. 9 would be a perfect square because it's 3 times 3. 16 is a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. 5 times 5, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So looking for a perfect square here that divides into 25, in this case, the greatest perfect square that divides into 25 or into 50 is 25. And in fact, 50 is exactly 25 times 2. Now, as it turns out, you can break radicals down if you find factors within the radicand. The radicand is what's inside the radical sign. So we can break this down into root 25 times root 2. Okay, well we know the root, square root of 25 is 5, since 5 times 5 gives you 25. For the square root of 2, well unfortunately I don't have any way of finding that number. Square root of 2 is just, in our case, square root of 2. Okay, let's take a look at a, another example here. Square root of 27. So again, I'm looking for a perfect square that divides into 27. Okay, well the number 4, no, where's my bed? there we go. The number 4 doesn't divide in there, and the next uh, perfect square would be 9. So we can do 9 times 3. 9 times 3 gives us 27. This breaks down into two radicals root 9 times root 3. And then root 9 itself is 3, whereas root 3 is an irrational number root 3. Okay, looking at the next example we have the square root of 80. So the square root of 80, uh, someone might be tempted to say, hey, that's divisible by 4. And to write it down as 4 times 20. To break that down then further, you would say that that's square root of 4, which is 2, times square root of 20, which is square root of 20. And that feels pretty good. It looks like I'm done. Uh, unfortunately, as it turns out, 20 can be broken down further. There's a perfect square factor within 20. Uh, that would be 4. So, uh, so we could rewrite this as 2 times root 20, which is root 4 times 5. Now again, we can break up that radical into root 4, root 5. So that would be 2 times the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 5. And so finally we end up with 4 root 5. Now there was a different approach that we could have taken instead. So I'll put a line down here. Uh, instead, uh, had we noticed that there was an even greater perfect square that divided in, in this case, 16, we can jump to this stage here. That 80 is equal to 16 times 5, so root 80 is equal to root 16 times 5 which is then root 16, or 4, times root 5. Notice that we end up with the same answer either way, but in the second case, if we can find the greater perfect square factor in the radicand, we can save ourselves a little bit of time. Okay, next we're going to take a look at a cube root. Okay, cube roots, uh, like square roots, can be broken down into two factors here if there are factors within the radicand. This time, however, I'm going to be searching for a perfect cube that divides into 54. Now, there aren't terribly many perfect cubes uh, in, in, in lower numbers that divide into to, to 54, so it's not going to take us long to find it, as it turns out. 
Well, let's see. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. So I'll just write that on the side. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed, 125, et cetera, et cetera. Now, just looking down that list, we notice right away that there is one perfect cube that will divide into 54. 54 is exactly equal to 27 times 2. So cube root of 54 is equal to the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. The cube root of 27, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. And so the cube root of 27 would be 3. The cube root of 2, well, that's an irrational number, and I can't simplify that any further. Okay, one last example of a cube root then for us. It's the cube root of 120. Okay, once again, I'm looking for a perfect cube that divides in there. Those perfect cubes, 2 cubed was 8, 3 cubed was 27, 4 cubed was 64, 5 cubed 125, and I could keep going. Okay, now as it turns out, 120 is divisible by 8. In fact, 120 is exactly equal to 8 times 15. So here in this example, I've jumped ahead and broken it down into two different radicals. And those two radicals will multiply out to give me the original radical of cube root 120. Cube root 8 is 2. And cube root 15 is cube root 15. In the next video, we'll look at how to reverse this process. Thanks for watching.